Hello, and welcome to the introductory episode of The Motley Collector. Um, my name is Al Fix, The Motley Collector, and I have a, a website called Alftenix Arts. Um, as I've been getting uh, a little bit older and I'm thinking of uh, weeding out some of my stuff, I found that I had uh, a lot, collected a lot of different things and in, in a lot of different uh, genres and styles and um, although I'm not looking to sell or eBay or anything like this uh, I would say most of this is going to my estate which is theoretically far down the future um, I always like telling stories and I'd like to share um, the uh, some of the stories behind the little things that I've collected or the, uh, the groups of things that I've collected. Um, so just for this first one, I'll have a, a, a quick uh, example of uh, a couple of the things. Um, of course, <clears throat> being a genre collector, science fiction, sci-fi, uh, my two main collections have been uh, Star Wars and Star Trek. I think Star Wars was the first one. I'll start off with my I think my most precious item, again, not for sale, not for eBay. This is the original Boba Fett from 1979. And a little close up there, you can see it's autographed by Jeremy Bullock. Well, this is not Boba Fett in carbonite. Um, it's got a something on the bottom. Um, so this was, I'll, I'll talk more about this with my uh, Star Wars collection, but again, um, probably worth a lot. It's not the uh, prototype with the jet pack. It's got, the, it's got a plastic, I'm gonna have to work on that re reflection there. It's got um, the rocket is solid and I think I have his blaster around here somewhere but you know, I could dig that up if I need to I have an idea where it is if it is still here um, so anyway that's pretty cool and even Jeremy Bullock was pretty impressed with that when I showed it to him he said he hadn't seen one of those in a long time a long time um, Here's going to the other, if I could keep it together, it's falling apart, the other franchise, main franchise that has a lot of collectibles is Star Trek, and here's just one of the goofy things I got, no I did not get all of them, I got the ones that were available, so I have Kirk and Spock, uh, Chekhov and Sulu, and this is kind of the neat thing about it. So, there's that. Um, let's see, a couple of things as I've been digging around, I found this. A lot of these things I get at um, conventions, and if they're a reasonable price or just something that catches my eye, I have to say I haven't hadn't opened this for maybe 15 years. I didn't even know what was in it. So, let's find out. Oh, this is uh, Green Hornet Cufflinks. I have a suspicion this came out with the um, the movie that came out a few years ago. Yeah, Green Hornet Cufflink set. Oh, it says right on the bottom. And then here's a matching uh, Green Hornet money clip, and that's a nice metallic. I don't think it's sterling silver, but uh, it's still a really nice one. The original Green Hornet is a pretty cool show, by the way. It was done right around the same time as the original Batman, which you've probably seen uh, the TV show. But uh, the striking thing about it was um, that it included Bruce Lee as Cato, and he does some really fantastic stuff in there. 
Um, they came out with uh, a couple of years ago. They started coming out with this new series of Funko Pop, and uh, again, that was just something that could have been an obsession. I could have, you know, bought everyone that I really wanted, but uh, I just like most of the other collectibles, I don't buy them as an investment. I buy them because I like them. So, and this one I was really taken with. This, and yes, granted, it's out of the package like the Boba Fett was, but um, I like to have them on my shelf and look at them. This is Ghost from Game of Thrones. And one of the things I really, uh, that I really liked about this is that um, I was fostering a dog at the time, a Northern Inuit, which is what Ghost was actually in the show. Uh, it's a, kind of a husky, but uh, it's a great dog, Reese. He got adopted. I miss you, buddy, Reese. Uh, let's see, I've spent a lot of time at uh, Disney World Orlando, and sometimes for the Star Wars weekends, and sometimes I bought things that were just, I don't know, I think obviously overpriced, or uh, why the hell did I buy that? Um, this one, uh, shot glass, Mickey Mouse shot glass. I have enough shot glasses, so I didn't really need any more, but that was $7.95. And that was a few years ago. That was 2007, I think. I was there for the 30th anniversary of Star Wars. 2007, yeah. Right, okay, and this, just <laughs> part of a magic kit I got, so something crazy. Always fun to fool the kids with. Oops. Well, it bounces anyway. Um, well, here's another thing from Disney. Again, one of those really stupid things. I don't know why the hell I bought that. It was I paid far far too much for it, but it's kind of funny. Anyway. Um, let's see. One of my other favorite uh, tchotchke things is um, with the franchise franchises um, is the original Batman TV show, which I mentioned before. And of course, this is I think it's a Hot Wheels um, but this of course the original Batmobile from the TV show this is one of my favorite vehicles ever and the detail in it is really nice too so that's pretty cool and it shows a great soundtrack also another one from way back when Battlestar Galactica. This is uh, not quite a micro machine, but this is a Cylon spaceship, Cylon ship. Pretty detailed. Of course, made as a ripoff a few years after Star Wars came out. That's a nice little display stand there. There's that from the reboot. I don't know. I'll have to look. Let's see. It says USA Cable, so maybe it's from the reboot. I thought it was kind of much more detailed than I remembered the original ones to be, so I might have to label these before I talk about them. Uh, let's see. And uh, I have a few things. Of course, part of my major part of my history was uh, four years in the Marine Corps, and I have some memorabilia for there, from there. Um, some of my rank insignia. Uh, and then the lapel pins like this. Of course, I would never wear that uh, being slightly var burnished right there. It would always have to be uh, embossed or embossed with the black, the M new. Keep it black. You don't have those marks on there. Okay, and my uh, finishing uh, sergeant rank. Yeah. And of course my rifle expert. Four years running. 
qualified as a rifle expert. Very proud of that. I was also um, a Taekwondo practitioner and instructor for over 30 years and I got a lot of uh, things related to that too. Um, and I would sometimes get gifts from my students. And so here's a little cute little thing. It's actually a mechanical thing and it would make really cool Bruce Lee noises when you'd squeeze it but it's so old now that the battery's dead and it doesn't have a an easy way to get in there and I don't really want to cut it apart to replace the battery so I just leave him as it is so and he'll, he sits up on my cupboard or the shelf just watches well he doesn't watch he's just with all the other stuff <clears throat> Okay, and uh, let's see. And I also have uh, last couple of years picked up a 3D printer, which has been really, really fun because it can I can create basically uh, in almost anything I can think of, and I really like neat shapes and things. So this one is I started with a sort of a tesseract, and this is just it's not mechanical or moving or anything. It's just the the angle that you at which you see it it just appears to change so if you look at it closer you can see how it's made up but and I've made some larger things too plenty of things license plates um, other uh, genre related things again that's another show and I got I think I'm gonna start the first show with uh, my decks of cards I was um, there's two types of cards that I've collected. Is one is regular, like card decks, like playing card decks, and the other one is um, art or artist cards, not hand painted ones, which uh, was a big fad for a while. But uh, card collections like this, and this one is um, Dinosaurs Attack. So also, uh, of course, based on the original Mars Attacks which has some really, uh, it's just a bunch of different bubblegum cards. And something happens where each card depicts a, some kind of scene. Time scanner disaster. And the destruction and terror continues from there. So that was a deck of those for six bucks. That was a good deal. And let's see a couple more. Oh, I get samples like this. Here's like this is another one of I liked artist cards from book covers. This is uh, Boris Vallejo. Um, I have a whole collection of his stuff and also a lot of his calendars too. So if he uh, read Ready Player Two, I think it also there's a uh, part of a Boris Vallejo calendar from 1989 that. Uh, takes place in the plot and I probably even have that downstairs and then some other course collections or just little sets that I got maybe onesies and twosies up oh, um, Ninja Turtle Star Trek I like those mashup kind of things I actually have the figures that go with these two those are uh, again that's another show this one is Robotic Rocksteady. And those are still in really good condition. And the last one I'm going to show on this show is uh, a deck of cards, like a deck of playing cards. Star Trek The Wrath of Khan. Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. It doesn't say two on there. But see, it's just a regular card deck. But the pictures and the quality of these pictures are really good for each each card. Very detailed and nicely colorful. Oh, that's my bird clock going off, if you can hear it. I'm going to have all kinds of other distractions here. Right? I don't think we've heard my cat yet, but we will. He's upside down. Okay. 
So, and I'm not going to go through each of the 52 cards, but you'll get a sense of those because I've got about mm, maybe 20 decks or so, and I'll just show some samples of those. So that's going to be the show, uh, the Motley Collector. I'm going to um, put out the shows, you know, whenever I can, whenever whenever I feel like it. Uh, I know this first one or the first few are going to be kind of uh, awkward, I guess, and we'll see how the lighting and comments go and stuff like that. So um, enjoy that, and I hope you can uh, maybe share some of the stuff that you've collected. Thanks. Till next time. Coming up, episode one.